Welcome back, I'm the Watch Nerd. On this video, we're gonna go into what's inside this Rolex box here, and what's inside is a Rolex Datejust. Uh, pretty, um, I should say, very uh, common um, Datejust, which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's pretty um, good in some ways where you can source parts, but it is the 16013. Before I do flip you into the box, because it's really cool today, we have all the original uh, stuff that comes along with it. I do want to keep announcing my Chanel chain giveaway. I'm going to be giving out the chain as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. Flipping ourselves right into it, uh, this is what it comes with. So this is one of the main reasons I wanted to show you because look at, uh, it is the original box. Most of the watches that you see come with a box and no papers are not from the actual original box. Um, so this is really, really cool. We also have all the original hand tags. I don't want to flip this over just because there's the serial, um, but it's the same thing with Rolex. There's nothing uh, different. This is, of course, the date just. Um, very, very cool. Normally, this kind of stuff does not survive through the years. I do have to mention this is 1984. Um, so it's very, very old, and it's great that these um, are still come attached. And the box is in pretty good condition, too. I mean, it is still uh, you know, not immaculate, but it is a very good condition. Uh, the box just has one of these things you pull out instead of the cushion nowadays. There's uh, many differences, but another one here, uh, as you can see, it's actually made in the U.S., so it's kind of funny. Uh, a lot of their stuff, even, they even made bracelets. Uh, they outsource bracelets for a very, very long time um, out of, uh, well, through the US. So it's pretty uh, funny that they also did that. So I bet a bunch of their attachments are made in the US or other places where um, Rolex gets them. Um, so here's the watch itself. This is the e Rolex Datejust 1984, as I said, very, very cool vintage piece. Um, but we're going to get into the specifications. It's very long. Um, I will show you it on my wrist. Uh, the reason it's so long is a person wanted to look at it. So we had to add a few. Uh, I think it was like three or four links to it. Um, quick wristwatch check very quickly. 1675. This is truly an amazing watch. In the next video, I'm going to share with you the unbelievable collection uh, from this uh, coll private collector. Uh, he's not a flipper, he's not a dealer. Uh, this particular watch is not part of his collection, um, but he has a lot of 1675s. That's just a hint uh, for what's to come. So stay tuned for that. Um, going to the watch itself though, uh, the state just, we're gonna get out our handy dandy caliber tool over here. And uh, this is a awesome uh, thing. I, I can't overstate it. Once I got this, I'm going to start doing it on camera. Normally I did it off camera with, uh, you know, showing you the dimensions, but we'll do it on camera. So, uh, you get to see it for yourself. Um, so the case is 36, but I'll just show you it is 35.7, but if we move it around, yeah, there 36, um, it's a 36 millimeter case. The lug to lug is Let's get it here. It's around 40, hold on. The bracelet tapers, um, so the lug is a little bit further on throughout the years. The bracelet has hollow end links, I do have to mention, so I will get it on here very quickly. It's around 41 millimeters, uh, give or take. Get it on. Yeah. Yeah, 43, 43 um, millimeters lug to lug. And then the height, it's a big thing is the crystal. Um, you'll notice because the crystal is hesalite on the, well, not hesalite, but it's acrylic. Um, 13 millimeters right there. Now, if it wasn't acrylic, it was sapphire, it would slim it down by a couple millimeters. The bracelet is 20 millimeters, but let's just get in here and I will show you. Um, it's it's 20 though. Um, at the end link, you'll see uh, the um, 
uh, in between the lugs there. Um, so you will get any fit. This is a strap monster. Uh, 20 millimeters is really the greatest uh, fit. Um, it's not 19. Um, I believe it is 20. Uh, just want to double make sure because uh, they didn't use 19 for a very, very long time until recently, actually. And uh, now I believe on their Explore, um, it's 19, but this is 20, this is 20 millimeter. And you can put that on basically any leather you want. It will fit I I anything. Uh, and that's one of the disadvantages of modern watches. The new Oyster Perpetual in 41, you have a 21. And that is just a nightmare. Um, to get it around, uh, but they still kept it in the 36 OP. Um, and uh, it does taper uh, a bit here. As you can see, there is a taper going all the way down. It is about 16, yeah, about 16 there, five, yeah, 0.8, but if I moved it around, it's 16. And then the clasp itself goes up to about 17. 16.8 yeah around 17 so um you 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 know you do get a taper but it is in my opinion the quintessential a uh, dress sporty piece you can go swimming with this piece you can go dining you can do anything you want even with the two tone yes the steel is a slightly more versatile but let me show you it on my wrist and uh I'll sh well really kind of speaks for itself uh two tone though you know what every time i put it on i want it but over time you know it's something that um in my opinion is not as versatile as the other let's zoom out a little bit here it is on my wrist so it still fits on a bigger guy's wrist um it really does and uh you know it shows the versatility of 36 millimeters and it wears a bit more some people say it even wears as big as 38 i say it wears around 37 37 and a half just because you have that oyster case and you have, um, well, you have the uh, waterproofness of this watch. This watch, when it was in the factory, was rated 100 meters of water resistance. Over time, I definitely recommend it. Uh, after every service, make sure they do a water check. Typically, if you take it to Rolex, they will uh, water check it, make sure it goes down to that 100 meters um, because you don't want to be you know, showering, swimming. I know people who wear this and never take it off for decades. It's just, it, you know, it's one of these pieces that you can do it. I love the old gold look. Um, it is hollow, of course, all the gold. So it's a very, uh, it's just a round. So it's, it's not a lot of gold. Uh, on their more recent pieces, I should say, there are solid, um, a lot more solid with the gold, but that is a solid gold bezel and the crown is 18 karat gold. The indices, I love this particular dial. Um, because it's a silver sunburst, but this is kind of the X factor of this watch. Uh, with the acrylic and the silver sunburst, it makes it look so beautiful right when the, you, know, the, you catch that light. And uh, this is the last reference to have acrylic um, crystal because you are getting the 3035. They did switch it slightly later to the 3135, which was in the Yacht Master, a Submariner, any sport model, any watch in the Rolex collection that was from that late 90s period, or well, mid 90s, uh, all the way through the 2000s, this uh, watch, you know, this movement uh, was in it. But this was the previous generation. It was still, I believe, in the Submariner date, though. I, I'm almost 100% sure. Um, that they used it. It's a very good movement, reliable, robust, uh, robust I should say. Um, you can bang it off the wall. It's pretty much going to stay stable. Um, I do recommend this service though, especially if you don't know how long it's been on these older pieces. This one has been though, so it's, it's very reliable. 28,800 BPH, um, which is modern day. So you're getting a few modern day uh, tweaks. I will show you also Again, so the screw down crown, it's perfect, man. It is so smooth on this uh, watch. I should, you know, it's, it's just amazing. You don't feel the smoothness of the crown you know, with an oyster case and the way Rolex does it on any other watch. Very, very smooth. You come out, this is the winding position. It's fully wound. And then the second position is the quick set date. 
Uh, today is the 30th, but if we go down 31st and you do go through all of them, this is what I recommend uh, to anybody out there uh, for their first watch, because this is a first watch kind of deal. Um, as you can see, it is a bit scratched up, that acrylic. Um, but if you're getting your first watch, always buy this movement or later. Don't buy the 1603, 1601, whatever, you know, they come out with. I, th I think it's, yeah, that, that range, the 1600 range. The problem with that is you're not getting quick set. And it is a nightmare to set those watches. Um, and a lot of things are technically in superior. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, in superior because uh, this is a much superior movement. This and the 3 one uh, three five have been compared many times, and they're basically identical. The three one three five has some modern day, you know, uh, updates. But at the same time, once you buy this movement or up, you're not going to know anything is different, right? The sixteen oh one, you don't have hacking, I believe. I'm not. A, I think this is one of the first ones to introduce hacking, and uh, that means stop seconds. As you can see, it stopped. You can get a more accurate read. It's very smooth, it's very good, and it's very accurate. This is the perfect uh, movement. I'm not saying you have to buy the two-tone, just buy something with the 3035 and above, if it has a date. If it doesn't have a date, it's not as much as a big deal, um, but I, you know, I really don't like it. Now, I see people that buy it, um, the that older version, and they, you know, in the store, it's very beautiful, it's very nice. Uh, it's all set, the date and everything. And if you have a multiple watch collection, it just becomes a nightmare. Um, so I definitely do think I've talked this to death, uh, but be careful. The bracelet construction, as I mentioned though, it is hollow, uh, press clasp, very easy though to do this. If you have a, you don't even need a, uh, you know, I should say strap tool, which it is handy, um, but is you have something to poke it out and put it back in very, very easy. So that's not an issue. Press clasp, very nice though. I love this, these older pieces and they stay really good. It is just a uh, no lever system any, uh, this way before the lever system. So you just got to do its pressure. Um, you know, I have never seen serious issues with uh, that. Um, so it's been very good so far. Everyone I've came across, even the old, old vintage ones, um, they're still very, very good. Like for instance, this is a um, very vintage bracelet. This is from 1965 uh, on this 6542, or 1963 or 62, it says it there. What is this? Let's find out together. 67, so the first quarter of 67. As you can see, very, very good condition. Riveted, of course. Um, but the press clasp pretty much stayed the same. You know, it's, it's very, robust uh, robust and reliable um, as these watches are. Um, so I wanted to do this review just because it's so cool to see the full set and uh, to really mention what you should be buying. Yes, uh, there is a little bit of a price difference. What are these? Around the four high fours, fives range, right? If you can get it for around, let's say 40, 4,800, I see them, I don't know, in that range. I, you know, it all depends on where you get it, what jeweler you're with, uh, who, who's uh, dealing with it. Um, but if you get it around there, uh, even if you pay 5,000, you're not in a bad boat uh, with this watch. Now, who knows what the market will bring in the future, but that's what they're really trading at now. Um, so I would, so I will catch you in the next one. I'm going to have a really, really cool video I've been hinting at for a very long time uh, coming out with this very cool vintage collection. So if you want to stay tuned, I recommend subscribing. And if you do want the Chanel Chain giveaway, there's the four steps in the description below.